Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Halo Combat Evolved. So on the topic of the Flood, I honestly think that the Flood should have been saved a little more. Because, like, Halo gives you so, so much in the first five levels of, like, hey, here's where humanity is. Here's what the Covenant is. And then here's the Forerunners, you know? And the Covenant is an alliance of all these different races. And also there's the Forerunners with the trying to attain and yada yada, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, all that shit. And it's like, also, here's the Flood, and it's a good way to mix up the gameplay. Because up till this point, you've been handling a lot of, you know, shooty, shooty, booty, booty stuff. So that thing, you may notice, is a very large man. And yep, they uh, they explode and unleash more infection forms. You know, it's pretty standard for zombies to explode. What up, 343? And he mentions that this is installation 04. So, you know, it's the fourth installation, four of seven. So, I've been told that on harder difficulties, this, uh, this, this level's a nightmare. I can already start to see why. But yeah, in terms of gameplay, it actually makes a lot of sense for them to give you the flood here. Because, like, at this point, you've seen jackals, grunts, hunters, and elites. You've seen all of them at about, uh, about as many times as you can without them getting, you know, stale. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm glad I turned this down. My normal tactics aren't going to work here, I sense. Something tells me. Oh, wow. Ugh. Gross. At first blush, this place looks like a shithole. But the fact that uh, the floors are textured very, very slightly and subtly is nice. However, naturally, it is better looking here. But yeah, like, you've seen... By this point in the story, you'll have seen quite a wide variety of... Covenant in all manner of locations, you know? You've seen them in and out of vehicles, you've seen them in very wide areas, narrow areas, stuff with horizontal, like, stuff with verticality, stuff with a lot of wide horizontal. I am increasingly glad that I turned this down. Jesus. Wow, that was great. Yeah, there's a lot that can be done to keep a player interested, but the biggest thing is to just have a bunch of interesting things. And the way to make something fresh and interesting is something new. Uh-oh. Yeah, sure, shoot him away. That's, that's actually great. Have one of those as well. Oof. 
I've run myself into a corner. Yeah, they're made very bulbous here. I guess that's why they explode so hard. And I'll wait here, I guess. Yeah, that's another example of like, oh, we changed how this species look. That means that they evolved in universe, you know? Like here, they're, they're big gooey boys and they don't have the little feather things and the little dewlaps on their head is, is uh, shorter. But then in later games, they wanted to mix that up and refine the design a little bit, which means that the species has now changed revocably. Well, the arrows say this way, but I've made my choice. Nice. Holy moly, there's a lot of you, huh? Have another one of those, why don't you? Perfect. Now I'm sure that there's nothing. Nothing at all behind me. Please ignore the massive clump of red behind me on my motion tracker. Which is probably also a reference to aliens as well. The motion tracker, um, in aliens they use a motion tracker to figure out where the hell the alien is. Yeah, I kind of figured, dude. Uh, and it looks visually similar, even if it isn't mechanically uh, similar. Say so they perform genetic restructuring, whatever that means. Oh, Jesus. I like how my butt turned. Play pigeon. One of you has a shotgun. Please give it to me. As for the Flood itself, I think the Flood is cool. I think calling it the Flood is a really cool uh, name for a, a zombie. And it gives the, you know, the idea that they want. You know, it's like a flood of flesh. Because, like, look at what I'm dealing with here. I do feel like I'm dealing with a flood of shit. You know, it's icky as hell, and there's so many of them, and they're so quick on you. Um, I think the uh, big bursty boys are called uh, infection pods or something. Uh, and then there's three other forms of the flood, and then a fourth special form. So these are just the default flood boys, yeah? Where, where they're very obviously, you know, a flood growing out of a human or growing out of a... Growing out of a human's organs or an elite or something like that. Wow. That's pretty gross. But there's a few more forms of the flood, per se. Uh, because they actually start to, like, mutate and adapt and change and undergo, like, a metamorphosis to better serve the reason the Flood exists, which is to make more of itself. And in the sense of Halo, it's also to, like, have a cool, fun arena with a bunch of radical enemies to fight. So one of the stronger forms is, like, the combat form... There's the one that, like, sticks to the wall and can shoot. I want to say it's called the Needler, but that's a gun. 
so it probably isn't that. Hell yeah. So yeah, these are the, the these are the drones we saw earlier. You can see they're called Sentinels, and they do their work well. Also, I like the implication that like they have a grade for for where people are, and humanity has only just gotten to two. And recall, humanity got here to two. I wonder if five five two four is a multiple of seven. It probably is. The humanity only got to level two because they were stealing technology from the elites. Wait, it gets worse. Right. I know that it stopped. Okay. I just checked because I don't want to put it past Bungie, but no. 5524 is not divisible evenly by 7. Unless I had a dyslexia and I should have typed in 5542. You scared me, 343. Can I call you Spark? I think most people call them Spark. Um, yeah, the combat form is the... It's so gray and dark here, you know? Like, because this isn't bad. I could see myself playing this. It's cool. You know, you, you can see that, like, while it's rough, there is a lot here, especially in the story department. So, yeah, we have to hold position, which is made easier by the Sentinels. Uh, on harder difficulties, uh, enemies just have so much health. The Sentinels have a really hard time just chewing through it all. They're also useful as, like, a spotter. They can help in lighting up uh, groups of enemies. You know, the more I have it like this, the more I can see that, like, yes, this is a good game. Have got all close. Got all close. That was that was dangerous. All right, let's go, Sentinels. Let's go. I helped. And here I was worried about running out of ammunition for this thing. I really want to see what Lasso uh, here looks like. Specifically, I want Achieve 100 to do it. I don't want to play this. So yeah, Plasma Weaponry can be very effective because of the burns. burns through their flesh, but they don't actually have access to shielding. Whoa! Where the hell did that come from? Whoa! As though I'm gonna fight through all that shit again. Yeah, I thought I saw an explosion. There's a fucking flood with a rocket launcher. You can see another example of the equilibrium there, the unstable equilibrium. Players that are good will be able to fight the guy with a rocket launcher and then have access to a rocket launcher. Whereas players who aren't as good will not have that rocket launcher.
you know, they won't be able to get a hold of it. But yeah, that's just uh, the idea of unstable equilibrium in game design. He only left me one of these, though. That son of a bitch. God, he's so weird. So how do you guys normally get around here, by the way? I've been meaning to ask. Like, it is literally 400 times the size of Earth, right? We've talked about this. Please wait here. Uh, yeah, sure. So these things also don't help with the, uh, the library being a nightmare. The moment where he's like, uh, hang out here while I unlock this door. Because one of the one of the reliable things about almost any video game is that if it comes down to it, you can always run away. You know? Push comes to shove, just run. And sometimes it'll cause you to fail objectives or something like that, but in things where it's like, hey, Stay on your ground here for like 10 minutes while I go unlock this door. Yeah, those can really, really uh, slow you down. Wow. You can see a lot of shapes like this in a Forerunner iconography, and I like that. This also looks like um, the, the shit you see in Halo 4. With a very little I played. I'm honestly kind of excited to play Halo 4. Dude. See, as I think I mentioned, I am actually kind of used... I'm almost more used to the, uh, to the newer reload of the shotgun, where Chief or whoever will click it, they'll cock it again. But here is just ready to go. Like, it reloads so much quicker. Because I've complained about the shotgun a lot, and I'm gonna only complain more. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But yeah, I, I'm of the opinion that I think. So yeah, I do have an E suit. Because, you know, the, uh, the Milner armor is rated to survive in. Um, space, the vacuum of space. Which means that if it comes down to it and they start changing the atmosphere to better suit them, which uh, has happened. Um, I want to say it's called a corpse world or something, but I might be confusing with dead space. So I wanted to comment, um, this is a franchise called Dead or Alive, right? It's a fighting game. And it's known for its uh, early implementation of jiggle physics, you know, of uh, titties swinging side to side and bouncing up and down. I love that you can't stop sucking the Forerunner's dick. It's moments like this where I'm really like, I, I see Halo's wide uh, agreeability. Because even if people don't like like the Covenant War, and that's fair, um, like the Flood appeals to a lot of other people who don't like the rest of Halo. Anyway, Dead or Alive was an early uh, impl implementer, early adopter of a uh, boob jiggle and boob physics. And of course, it's like anime physics, so... They could swing, like, independently of each other. They behave like gravity is more of a suggestion. Got a mind of their own, them boobs. But it had a spinoff called Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball, which is pretty notorious for the uh, softcore pornography uh, content. But it's basically, remember all those boobs? All those girls from Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball? Well, now, I mean, all those girls from Dead or Alive? Oh, yeah. 
The well-beloved elevator sequence from video games. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Adjusting my mic. Well, now, all the girls from the Dead or Alive fighting game you love so much will now uh, play volleyball against each other. Beach volleyball. So, you know, they're bouncing and jiggling all over the place, hitting volleyballs and spiking and diving and stuff like that. And they're also, like, relaxing by the pool. Technically reductive to call them one species. Technically nothing, in fact. It's reductive to call them one species. The Covenant is, you know, a Covenant. It's a group of uh, many different species. Is Guilty Spark a racist? Yes. Anyway, DOA Beach Volleyball. Um... So, for whatever reason, it was uh, Xbox exclusive, which is weird because Japan doesn't really like the Xbox. A lot of Japanese developers don't like to make stuff for the Xbox. And um, the, the thing that was the most embarrassing that I ever saw, like, as in this is one of the most embarrassing numbers I've ever seen, uh, the Yokai Watch game for the 3DS sold more than the Xbox One in Japan. So yeah, like, put that into your head. A single video game for a mildly popular children's cartoon outsold an entire console in Japan. If that doesn't exemplify how Japan doesn't care about the Xbox, well, it should. So I had to itch my head. Yeah, Japan doesn't like the Xbox. But for whatever reason, there were a bunch of weird Japanese exclusives. Like, you know, for whatever reason, the Jet Set Radio was an Xbox exclusive for a while. Because Jet Set Radio came out on the Dreamcast, but then uh, the sequel was exclusive to the original Xbox. And for the 360, Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball was an exclusive, I believe. And for this reason, uh, they had a crossover with Halo. So one of the girls was a Spartan. Except she wore full Mjolnir armor and she was like very accurate to Halo. And because that game came up before Halo 3 or ODST or Halo Wars, Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball is technically the first example I mean, technically nothing. It is the first example of a Spartan appearing in an Xbox game, in an Xbox 360 game. And like, it's not in Halo 3, it's not even in a game made by Bungie. It's this fucking titty anime beach volleyball game. Which is just one of those little pieces of trivia I, I adore. I hold on to those. Like, imagine getting beaten to the punch with your own character, with your own universe, by software pornography. There's a gun around here somewhere, right? Sure is. Can you open a little quicker, bro? So yeah. Forerunners put the flood here to try to study it. Oh, Jesus. Where is it? Forerunners put the flood here to try to study it. That didn't work out. Flood got out like they always do. Because the Covenant was like, ooh, it's a, it's a big fucking Forerunner door? Holy shit. Of course, let it be known that that door was actually locked. Yep. Give me your gun. Yeah, 
having a rocket launch is kind of a liability. I really almost just turned around and shot him. So with a... Uh, with a rocket launcher, one of the uh, time honor techniques uh, is to shoot the ground. Because the explosion will hurt things around whoever you shot the feet of. That isn't uh, necessarily always the case. In Doom, you can't actually aim downwards. But your best bet is to shoot the wall that someone stands next to. Some of them survive to reproduce. Don't have to reload it if I just throw it away. So yeah, um, this this is where some bombshells stop start getting dropped on people, and it's kind of weird because these are things that people don't care about. <laughs> like, think about Reach and ODST, and um, well, I guess those two are the pretty big ones. Yeah, with Reach and ODST, it's just Covenant versus Human, and. It's just Covenant versus Human. And the Forerunners and the Flood don't feature into it at all. Oh yeah, I've got these. I should use these more. And in Halo Wars, it's predominantly Covenant versus humans, with a little bit of the Flood, and sometimes the Forerunners are mentioned, but basically they're mentioned as set dressing. The Forerunners are, you know, just, oh, this is why the Covenant are here, it's because it's because of Forerunner stuff. Anyway, well, you know? Now granted, I think that this shit is cool. I love Precursors and Forerunners. I love the idea of the precursor as a world building thing. I will deactivate the security lock. You know, the ones who came before. That's cool. Wow. Yeah, I'm really just locked the hell in here. I like how that looks like kind of kind of like a face. Yeah, I, I literally saw a meme that's when the violence come in in the library and it's people just getting scared. God, I have to play it like Doom, like legitimately. I have to be constantly moving. I really gotta do a series on Doom. You know what, I've decided I will. Okay, now come no closer, sir. Seeing elites with an assault rifle is kinda weird. So the news that's come out recently, um, this will be very old news. This is actually already old news in internet time. But 343 recently fucked over um, people who play Halo. So, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're fans. Because they, oops, trying to reload there. They've made a new thing with a Halo Infinite, which is the new Halo coming out, where you don't just have access to a color wheel or a big list or a big chart of colors. You instead have access to gray or red and blue if you're in multiplayer. Jesus. Uh, and you can buy armor shaders as DLC. And in addition to limiting customizability to a ridiculous extent, it also requires that someone buy 
you know, a bunch of microtransactions for this game just to customize the look and color of their character. And something that's even uh, more distressing, this is the first game to ever do that. Like, there are some instances where in Halo you had to unlock things, but you bought those with credits, which you would typically unlock just by playing... Keys to secret weapons, nice. You would typically unlock credits just by playing the game, either the multiplayer or the campaign. And, like, when I had reached on the, uh, on the 360, I didn't play multiplayer, and I still got enough credits to unlock what I wanted, which is a uh, white operator helmet. Because I had a uh, I had a McFarlane toy, a McFarlane toys toy, and that was what uh, that was what it was. It was a white Spartan three, white armor Spartan three, I should say. Uh, yeah, white armor Spartan three from Reach, with uh, the operator set, and. Uh, the operator sets this really cool, like, more triangular set. It looks almost like a Gundam. And it has this uh, camera on the helmet piece. So, like, on the forehead, there's this little, like, camera on the brow, essentially. Okay, this is cool. This fucking hallway scene. But yeah, anyway, point of order is even a, like, schlub kid who had only played three Halo games could unlock what he wanted. Whereas in the new game, you can't. Pretty much no one is happy about it, and, like, it is so obviously just a ploy to try to squeeze more money out of people. Because they only make a game once every three or four years. Like, recall that it was very obvious. Like, these games take a while to make. And, like, recall my example earlier, Halo 4 came out on Election Day, which means that it came out eight years ago. So these games only come out, on average, once every four years or so. And, like, that's just not quick enough to make money. And they're hoping that, like, well... Uh, maybe it'll just sell enough on its own. And, like, basically everyone who owns an Xbox is going to buy Halo. But then Halo's popularity has been weeding as of late. So they put it on the PC, but that's still not enough for them. So they got to introduce microtransactions. It's pathetic, frankly. Um, like, 343 has been all over the place. Because, first... They, they get the Halo license away from Bungie. And the whole thing was like, Bungie was like, we're done, we're stepping back. We did the trilogy. We stepped back and we showed um, Reach and how we got here. You know, because as we've discussed, the intro cutscene of this is almost identical to the ending cutscene of Reach. Oh boy. Uh, we showed ODST, we had Halo Wars to see what regular armies are in the middle of. You know, we're done. We, we did all our, we did six games, we did some movies. You know, a bunch of comics and books, but we're done. And, and Halo 3 comes out, and it was hype like nothing else. Like, very few things have been as hyped as Halo 3. I didn't know what Halo 3 was, and I was still hyped for it. Jesus Christ. It snuck up behind me. And like everything about Halo 3 was that you were going to finish the fight. And that's the tagline for Halo 3. You know, finish the fight. You're going to end this saga. You're going to finish the story. Chief is going to earn his rest, you know? And that's cool. And that's great. And that's awesome. And I love that. And then Halo 4 comes out, and it's like, well, hey, what's up? Remember that fight we finished? Uh, turns out there's a little more fight. We add a little a uh, little more in the back. So if you can uh, finish up that fight as well, that'd be great. You know, can, can you come in on your day off and finish off a little more fight? And, like, that's questionable. And, like, 
as I've discussed, I didn't like Halo 4 to the point where I quit playing it. And I am not alone in that. A lot of people put down Halo 4, even though they were big fans of Halo 3 or Reach. And there's a lot of reasons for that um, story. The fact that they try to resurrect a franchise that was very conclusively wrapped up, even though the franchise's ending originally was open enough that, you know, there could be a sequel. But that wasn't what anyone cared about. I'm a guy, as a kid, I really loved sequels, and I was, like, afraid of short games. I was afraid of short, you know, TV shows or movies. Because I was like, no, I want to see I want to see all that I can possibly see. But, like, as I've grown older, sometimes it's like, yeah, no. It is sometimes better that things are shorter and sweeter. And 3 was one of the first examples of me being like that, of me being... Wow, yeah, it's great that this is short, sweet, over and done. I love this, you know? And, like, I like playing Reach, but I don't care about what has to happen afterwards, you know? I don't need to know what happens to Chief after 3. And then they just, you know, showed us what happens to Chief and Cortana after 3. I like that he reaches for it, and then he's like, eh, okay. Protocol requires that I take possession of the index for transport. Your organic form renders you vulnerable to infection. The index must not fall into the hands of the flood before we reach the control room and activate the installation. The flood is spreading. We must hurry. So I'm sure there's some bullshit reason, but like... Oh, man, two betrayals. I've heard a lot of uh, a lot about this mission as well. I'll keep recording since I'm only 35 minutes in. Yeah. Which means that any organism with sufficient mass and cognitive capability is a potential vector. Is something wrong? No, nothing. Splendid, shall we? Unfortunately, my usefulness to this particular endeavor has come to an end. Protocol does not allow units with my classification to perform a task as important as the reunification of the index with the core. That final step is reserved for you, Reclaimer. It's interesting that the Forerunners Enough. wrote religious protocols for AI the flood is spreading. into if both the AI itself and them out. their you own doctrines. You have no idea how this ring works, do you? Why the Forerunners built it? Halo doesn't kill blood. It kills their food. Humans, Covenant, whatever. We are all equally edible. The only way to stop the flood is to starve them to death. And that's the Exactly what Halo is designed to do. Wipe the galaxy clean of all sentient life. There you go. You believe me? Ask him. Is it true? More or less. Technically, this installation pulse has a maximum effective radius of 25,000 light years. But once the others follow suit, 
This galaxy will be quite devoid of life, or at least any life with sufficient biomass to sustain the blood. So it will leave behind amoebas and stuff. Amoeba. I mean, how could you? Left out that little detail, did he? We have followed outbreak containment procedure to the letter. You were with me each step of the way as we managed this crisis. Chief, I'm picking up movement. Why would you hesitate to do what you've already done? We need to go right now. Last time you asked me if it were my choice, would I do it? Having had considerable time to ponder your question, my answer has not changed. There is no choice. We must activate the ring. Get us out of here. If you are unwilling to help, I will simply find another. Still, I must have the index. Give your construct to me, or I will be forced to take it from you. That's not going to happen. So be it. Save this earth. Dispose of the rest. Look out. Oh god, okay. I start with a plasma pistol? shotgun huh so yeah um continuing my spiel from earlier I was very pleased with the way that halo ended and you'll see me be similarly pleased oh well hold on never mind shut up me turn this back up actually there's a lot you'll see me be similarly pleased when we watch it again that is the effective range of this installation and so to do a sequel is quite According to the star charts archived on board this installation, I estimate that there are 3,792 worlds capable of sustaining biological sentient life within that 25,000 light year range. In reality, it may be significantly more than that. And if the full array was tuned and activated by installation 00, the harmonics of the overlapping waves would magnify that effect exponentially. Cascading to cover every node star system. And that only considers the firing of a mere seven halos. Had the original 12 rings survived to see use. Sterilization would spread far further than most forerunners ever feared we could reach. Even with just seven rings, we were able to destroy every side of the planet and every other sentient creature along with it. This victory was the will of our people, despite the fact that it meant our own end as well. But by our empiric measurement, it was a victory and cleared the stage for the rest of the librarian's plan. I sometimes wonder whether the didact could have succeeded at a much smaller cost. I know the folly of opposing him personally, and his brilliance was unsurpassed. Except, perhaps by your own. He never got the chance to fully execute his proposal. The council saw to that. But if something were to go wrong with one of the halos, if our tools were ever turned against us. Long plans, indeed. So Pyrrhic victory comes from uh, the son of Achilles, Pyrrhus. Before you call bullshit, how can Achilles have a son? He's gay. Well, he had that son while he was pretending to be a woman. So yeah, draw your conclusions from there. Again, this is another mix-up of uh, this is another mix-up of stuff because now we have the old enemies coming back in as the former allies now become the newest new enemy. We have dudes, you know, in the air. We have drones. And you have a weird moment where infighting gets to the point where you can have humans fighting alongside with you. the gun pointing at the head of the universe. It's such an we amazing chapter. We can't let the monitor activate Halo. We have to stop him. We have to destroy Halo. 
According to my analysis of the available data, I believe the best course of action is somewhat to protect the sufficient size to help destabilize the ring and will cut through a number of primary systems. We need to trigger a detonation on a large scale, however. Starship's fusion reactor is going quickly. Ring a ding ding, we're using another Starship fusion core to blow shit up again. find a way to activate Halo's final weapon without the index. The machinery in these cannons are Halo's primary firing system. They consist of three phase pulse generators that amplify Halo's signal and allow it to fire deep into space. The cannons are enormous. I can't even begin to calculate the pulse's range. So I was going to comment, kind of weird that um, with uh, 400 times the size of Earth, everything we need is still within, you know, essentially walking distance. But you know what, that's okay. sound down a little bit because I forgot to. So yeah, on the topic of uh, Halo, like the return, with Star Wars, I can see it. You know, I, I have... So you do that same thing in Halo 4 to, to blow up uh, stuff like that. They're big pylons that shoot into the sky and you did a step into them and blow your shield off to activate them. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Anyway, with, with Star Wars, I can see why people would want to do a sequel. I think... Um, stuff to look to. I think the area after um, episode 6 is one of the least interesting parts of Star Wars. Which is partially why Mando is so good, because it fits into such a, a nothing place. But yeah, um, the point that I've been trying to make for probably about 30 minutes now is that I was conflicted for a lot of reasons about 343 rebooting or restarting Halo. To the point where, like, I wasn't sure if it was a good idea or if I would even play it. But then on the other hand, 343 has done awesome things like... This is funny. Talk about that. In a second. 343 did awesome things like the remaster of this game, the Master Chief Collection, and how widely available it is. Like, dude, reach on PC. Is that a grenade? Sure was. Yeah, like porting reach to PC. Getting, like, every Bungie made Halo onto one disc for the Xbox One. And, um, every Bungie made disc, uh, every Bungie made Halo onto the same disc for Xbox One. Damn. As well as, uh, Halo 4, and then putting that on PC. Those are all fantastic, you know? 
being like to this day, you can still play Halo 1, 2, 3, 4, Reach, and ODST multiplayer and Firefight because of 343 and how they're very good at keeping up the servers. And like that's all that's all amazing. That's all fantastic. That's great. And then they also got the uh the whole shit with armor skins, you know? But anyway, that's why I'm so conflicted about them. Because they've done so much good. But all of that good has been... The multiplayer of 4 and 5. And then remastering or remaking games that a smarter, better company already made. And they don't have too much of their own, you know? It's just kind of a shame. Because Halo is great. This is interesting. But yeah, I guess that explains why I did so many of the so many similar rooms because they do have the same function. And I've talked about this in the past as well, but hey, it's another great example of asset reuse. Of like they can't make a Oh god damn it, not again. I did, it was the same hole. It was the same hole, guys. I went through it again. It was the same hole as I did last time. I just fell into the same hole from a couple of hours ago. Like, I fell into that hole just after breakfast and now it's almost dinner. Of course, there was some editing and recording and stuff in the middle, but, you know. Same hole, man. Alright, I'm feeling much more like a god of war. Though I am playing on easy, so... It's not really that fantabulous if I'm just on the lowest difficulty with two skulls on. Nice. Dominant. Dominant move. Oh, so this is safe. Kooky. Oh, so they only break when you plasma them. I guess that makes sense considering how shields are supposed to work. But anyway, yeah, they didn't want to make a new level. So what we're doing is we're going backwards through all the other levels. Or, you know, the ones that we've been at for a little while. Wait, is this the right way? Because you have to follow the arrows backwards now, I think. But yeah, this honestly isn't bad. In terms of asset reuse, the first part's really cool. Because, like, hey, it's the same valley that you already did, you know? Oh, whatever. I don't care. But doing with a banshee, that's awesome. Not again. But yeah, because then you get to see it from a literally new perspective. You get to fly around and shoot at things from above instead of, you know, trying to keep your ass out of your butt and shooting at things from below. Or on an even playing field, as it were. And we go back to this bridge. That guy's... That's a dead man. And, like, this is interesting because we're caught in the middle of a shootout between Flood and Aliens. And, like... I've talked about how the Flood has such a specific way of fighting. And that's why they're interesting to fight as Chief. And the Covenant have an interesting, you know, their own way of fighting. And seeing those clash against each other... And, like, I talked about how it's cool to have a shootout across two halves of a bridge. I hope I'm going the right way. But, yeah, it's cool to have a shootout across two halves of a bridge. Um, one of the only good parts in Duke Nukem Forever is like that. Jeez. 
Jesus. Anybody else? Just some smallies. Is that two for the price of one? I think it was. Here, have one of those. Oh, geez, and we're here, too, now. <laughs> here it is. Oh, yeah, on the topic of um, player customization and how 343 claims that it's important to them, but... That's obviously bullshit because they made it a microtransaction. Uh, you can't play as the elites anymore. You could in Halo 3 on. So 3, ODST, and Reach. I don't know if you can in 4, but the Covenant is de-emphasized, so... You know, that would make sense. But yeah, like, in, in those games, it makes sense that, you know, you would have people play as elites because, as has been discussed... Elites are a counterpart to Spartans. They're essentially equivalent to Spartans. Oh wow, and it's and now we're on the 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 flood side of the bridge. You know, we're on the flood side and the Covenant's over there shooting at us and there's also Covenant above. That's cool. That's probably what this is for as well. Dominant. Right on cue. Oh man, I'm here? Okay, well, that's fine. I always thought that you should be able to play as, um... Brutes. Yeah, get him. I don't know if playing as Brutes actually makes sense. They're treated like they're another counterpart to, um... They're treated like they're another counterpart to Spartans, although um, some of them also actually consider themselves to be the Covenant equivalent of an ODST. Where, like, they're almost Spart- God damn it, they're almost Spartans, but they're just not as tough. And yeah, that's how Brutes be um, in the Covenant. They are almost elites, but just not as smart. Yeah, right, I came up here. Wow. That was really cool. Also, like, I, there, there are some helmets that are actually based off of ODST helmets that Spartans can wear. Like, a Veronica's recon helmet can be worn as a Spartan helmet. It's what I have on my character currently. Probably because it's the coolest helmet in the game. That's the rocket. Oh god. Here comes the arm. Gun beats punch, typically. 
unfortunate as it may be. But yeah, I always think it'd be interesting to see um, proper ODSTs playable in multiplayer. Especially balanced against, um, you know, Spartans. And like now I know I'm asking for too much, but could we get a Halo MMO? Nah, I don't actually want one. The thing about a lot of MMOs is that um, they kind of disintegrate because it just doesn't feel right. Like, uh, let me give you an example. Um, with the Star Wars MMO, uh, The Old Republic. It's based off of the Bioware MMOs, you know, KOTOR, which are some of the best RPGs of all time. And I, a big RPG guy, will brazenly say that. And yes, I know how fucking busted those games are. I still think that they're some of the best. Some of, but not the best. Chew on that. Thank you. Oh my god, did I step on them? I did. You can do that. That's cool. Alright, I feel like there should be a checkpoint. Come on, I've done so much. If I have to do all of that again, that's, that's untenable. <laughs> Got some goop on me there, sorry. Sorry, it just kind of sounds like the intro to Heart and Soul. The the piano song. Oh, wow, it's just flood out here. I'm running dry. That ain't good at all. A little quiet out here, huh? Oh, shit. Yeah, that guy's here. No, please. Oh, God. The horde. God, it's like a wave or something. <laughs> that's, that's terrifying. That moment of just the click of an empty gun. That's a legitimately fantastic moment. Did none of you guys have guns? I heard an elite, though. I like how earlier we saw an elite jump to his death because he thought he could make it. Not really in character for the elites. Very in character for a brute, but... They, uh... In, at this stage, they actually don't exist. Hey guys, what's up? Oh my god, that was so dangerous. Why did I do that? Why did I? Why was I so close? Well, it worked. Overall, I'm none worse for the wear. Overall. Oh god, is that another fucking rocketman? No, Elton John, go away. I think I prefer having either or. Sorry, that doesn't make any sense. I think that there should be either health or shield. You shouldn't have both. Because now I have the same problem as I would with health, except I have shield over it. Which means that you can assume the player has more health, but... 
that isn't what the system's supposed to be. It's supposed to be about the shield. So that's why I think having the shield with a little bit of grace health on on, on afterwards is a smart way to do it. Checkpoint. Finally, Jesus. Did I really go all that time without a checkpoint? Oh, hey, guys. Anyway, so on the type of MMOs, um, the thing about the Star Wars MMO is that Star Wars is a thing about a hero, you know? It's about Luke. It's about Obi-Wan. It's about uh, uh, the guy you play as in KOTOR 1 and 2. You know? <laughs> it's about Nameless Jedi Exile. But that character is supposed to be you. You know, it's you in Star Wars. Unless you're Chris Avalon, in which case Kreia is you in Star Wars. Um, and so you have these characters and, you know, there's the one main one. And then, so you play the MMO and now there's 50 of the one main one. There's a couple million of them. Everyone is the one main character. Everyone's the chosen one. And the story can talk about your uniqueness value all at once. But the fact of the matter is, is that you aren't unique. You're just another player in an MMO, a franchise, a genre, uh, signified by how many people play it. Like, MMOs are known for just having more people on any given server than any other game type ever. So, that can be disheartening, you know? Because you're not Luke Skywalker. You're, you know, someone Skywalker 1950. And that number might actually be accurate. There's just a lot of you. I feel like I'm going the wrong way. It's been a while since I've seen the objective. I'm starting to feel bad like I went the wrong way. Of course, I can't double back, but... I imagine I'll get to either a dead end like this. Well, there you go. I'm in a dead end. See if I can't find a little arrow on the floor to guide my way. Really strange that they just give you arrows to help you. Oh, hello, sir. Wait. Damn. Here we go. And the music is coming back in. Okay, let's take care of the next bolt generator. You got it, Cortana. Wow, now we're all the way back out here. Huh. And that's something. So I'm guessing I would know a, a pulse generator when I saw it. All the way up there, huh? Wait, I can't hijack these, can I? What am I doing? Why did I get close to this? Yep. Come on, save it. Yes, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So, um... Could I have done that whole thing on, a, on the back of a plane? I feel like I maybe should have. Well, anyway, back to work. Give me your gun. If the Lord wants me to have a shotgun, he'll give me one later. <laughs> you know, I hear something about closing doors and opening windows. So anyway, um, on the topic of MMOs again. Well, I guess I never really left the topic. Oh, God. Wow, it's so much darker on the classic.
Like, it's it's literally night and day. I feel like one of these is meant to be the level at night, and the other one is meant to be the level at day. Any chance of pancaking you? It worked. Holy shit. <laughs> Crazy how a big pile of worms can make a uh, sound. So with MMOs, you got, um, as I discussed, you know, everyone is the protagonist. Whether or not that actually makes sense. Whether or not you want them to be. You know, you have to put up with everyone being there. And that sucks. With certain things. But with other things, that is pretty logical. The, one of the reasons that Lord, uh, that Lord of the Rings and uh, World of Warcraft have, in my opinion, is pretty well, pretty good MMOs, is because oh wow, look at that moon! Can't even see it here. Yeah, one of my one of the reasons that I have good opinions about the Lord of the Rings and Warcraft MMOs is that Warcraft is not about one guy. Warcraft is about an army. And so... you stepping up and being one guy in an army makes pretty logical sense, you know? And with Lord of the Rings, it's all about the massive population of Middle-earth. You know, even the main story has nine main characters and that's just in the fellowship and there's also there's also you know Thade and King and uh Eowyn and Bilbo Elrond Arwen so like Lord of the Rings is like 20 or 30 main characters so the fact that the MMO has this many important people is not crazy you know the fact that you have a party is not weird oh dear god where am I? Okay, I'm here. You know, it makes sense that you would have a party because Lord of the Rings is all about the party. In The Hobbit, you have the 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 burglar in party. You know, that's Bilbo's gang. The people he goes to steal from Smaug with. It's 13 dwarves and a... Uh, Thirteen dwarves and a uh, halfling burglar, you know. Also, an, a wizard. Can't forget the wizard. There we go. See, getting out of there is really dangerous, especially because I've only got one little hair of health left. Why don't we, Why don't we get in there when everyone's preoccupied? You're supposed to be preoccupied, you cunt. Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to whittle through these guys, huh? I feel like I've been recording a while. Let me check that. Uh, yeah, it's been an hour and ten minutes. Um... Well, in that case, I've been Alfred. This has been Halo Comet Evolved. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for coming by and listening to me ramble.